So my name is Pierre. Oh. Pierre Rouge, actually what we are going to see today is a um, medieval city. So Pierre Rouge was uh, during the middle and it started during the 5th century. So during, uh, from the 5th century to the 15th century. But it lasted more or less a thousand years. And so uh, here, Apogee, the, ape the apex of uh, Pierre Rouge was during the 14th century and the 15th century. And at that time the lords and the city was quite important and powerful. So the known history of Peru's actually started with the 12th century, and we know that at that time, uh, and during the um, yes, during the 12th century, but more precisely in 1130, we know that uh, there was a lord here in Peru. There was not a city here, but there was a castle just right here. We think that this tower here is the the only only thing that remains of the, the, the castle from the 12th century, during the 12th century, because this castle was destroyed, and I think during the 14th century, because during the 14th century and the 15th century, this area became more and more important, uh, as more and more people used to come here, to move here, to live, and to make business here. So the inhabitants here started to destroy the castle to create a, a whole city. And so this uh, destroyed the castle that, were, that was used to defend the area before. And so they had to um, build, to create a fortified city because the castle was destroyed. Some walled around the city and just the city, so no fortress, no fortress. But they built this building here especially. So this building is in ruins today. But uh, before, during the Middle Ages, it was the Barbican. So the Barbican is a kind of door before the door. So the main door, the entrance door was here, but they built a structure here to defend the entrance door. So there were guard soldiers in the body who defended the, the, the city and up here. And if you look at the top of the tower, you can see that there are some kind of beams at the top, at the top of the tower. So these beams were uh, used to support, to maintain what we call the machicolation, the port, so you have to imagine a um, wooden structure at the top of the tower, all around the tower, and from the uh, hoarding, from the machination, people could throw things at the enemies. And do you know what they used to throw at enemies during the Middle Ages? Stones, uh, boiling water, arrows, yes. Clean, <laughs> yes, less dirty. And uh, they, to defend the area, to defend the city, they built the building behind me. And the building behind me is uh, today still a church. And this is a special church. It's a church, but it's also a fortress. We call it the Fortress Church. And so now we are going to get in the church to see how it was built to be a church, but to be a fortress, to, to be included into the defensive system. to defend the whole city and the building. And if you compare the uh, stained glass windows, we have some very narrow stained glass windows here and uh, a few windows. Here in the prince's house during the Middle Ages was a kind of feudal lord, a man under and like a very important rich um, craftsman um, workshop. For example, the craftsman house, it was the workshop on the ground floor here where the craftsman, craftsman sorry, um, worked. And during the Middle Ages, when people wanted to buy something, they stayed outside in the streets and they had to. Um, 
look at the stall here where the craftsman put his most beautiful stuff and make business with the craftsman who was inside. But the buyers stay outside here in the streets. And on the first floor, there was uh, the, the house of the craftsman. I think maybe there must be a, a table, some chairs, a bed too. But the beds during the Middle Ages were um, less long than today and larger than today. The lying down position was the position of dead people. And so that's why they slept oh like God. that. And so they were uh, thicker, they were larger during the Middle Ages because everybody slept in the same bed. The whole families used to sleep in the same bed, so that's why they were larger. The chamber pots. And when there was no enemies outside and when the bucket, the chamber pot was full, we used to throw it from the windows in the streets. Through the window, people had to yell, to warn people in the street and to yell three times, mind the water. So mind the water, mind the water, mind the water, and then to throw. So that warned people in the streets. And when people were in the streets and heard mind the water three times, they had to stand like that against a um, facade, against the building to avoid being hit by something. So here, that's the main square of Perouge. Planted here 227 years ago in 1792. And there was a very special event in 1792 here in France. That was the French Revolution, actually. And more precisely, the announcement of the first republic. For the first time here in France, we had a republic. <laughs> So before it was a kingdom and then during the French Revolution we beheaded the royal family and it became the kingdom became a republic and to commemorate that event in 1792 the new government the new republic um, wanted to plant trees of liberty everywhere so that's the tree of liberty the freedom tree here in front of the house of the surgeon of justice during the Middle Ages, the surgeon of justice dealt with the justice here in Perouge. But during the Middle Ages, there were, there were um, several kinds of justice, several levels of justice. So the first one, the low justice, then the middle justice and the high justice. And so the low and middle justice were about small crimes, um, small fractions like uh, um, small um, fights, for example, between uh, inhabitants of Perouge. And the high justice was about the major, the se severe uh, crimes, like murder, like um, huge thefts, like betrayal, for example. And so, so uh, during the Middle Ages, when someone committed a murder, uh, we beheaded him with a big axe. Yeah, like they got to aim right. And, the, and uh, for uh, yeah. huge thefts, we, had, we used to cut a hand, not both, but just one, um, for an ear, the nose, sometimes. Yeah. All of these or one of them? Not just one. <laughs> <laughs> it's better to kill him directly without. <laughs> Because that's, that was the, the, the flow of the defensive system here, that door here. So I A wall made of stone just behind the door. So when the French uh, finally destroyed the door, they were in front of a stone wall. So that discouraged the French army, uh, that made them very angry too. And so they had... Actually, they had no alternative but to retreat after that. So they leave the city. They left the city, sorry. And uh, the inhabitants of Perouge were victorious thanks to that wall made of stone. Yeah.
At the beginning of the 20th century, that was the uh, industrialization period, and so they made a lot of big factories around big cities and the big cities became bigger and bigger and so uh, people to, had, to get a job had to move to big cities, to these factories there. So uh, there were less and less people living in Perouge during the 19th century and even at the beginning of the 20th century. At the very beginning of the 20th century there were six people living here, just one family. Nearly was abandoned, completely abandoned here. So we are quite lucky. And that's the end of the visit.